1979, all the fathers of Nobel Prize winners were rounded up by the United Nations military units, all right, and actually forced a young to give semen samples in little plastic jars, which are now stored below Rockefeller Center, underneath the ice skating rink. We want to be there for the thaw. <laughs> I mean, it's disgusting. You know what they put in the water, don't you? Fluoride. Yeah, fluoride. On the pretext that it strengthens your teeth. That's ridiculous. You know what this stuff does to you? It actually weakens your will. It takes away the capacity for free and creative thought and makes you a slave to the state. So you ever wonder about all these militia groups and survivalist type groups on the right wing side? And they say that they're defending the country from the UN troops. These guys are yelling so loud. My theory is that this is a conspiracy, pal. That they are the UN troops and that they're in place. The infrastructure ready and they're debating properly. When the time comes, they'll just take over. We'll all be told. Okay, I'm sure your heart's in the right place, okay? But, you know, somebody's got to lift the scab, the festering scab that is the body. A chip for identification so they can track down an animal anywhere he's at. You'll insert it under the dog's skin, and it's kind of like an identification thing. I mean, it's only a small logical step, so they start putting it in us and our children. And then, before we know it, my God, they'll probably come with the... Is that one of those new hundreds? You know, where they change the picture of Ben Franklin? Yeah. He looks like the love child of uh, uh, Fred Burks and Rosie O'Donnell. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, get rid of him as soon as you can, lady. Look at it up to the light. You see the middle strip of it? That's a tracking device. If you have any more of them, uh, get rid of them. It's a big one. Because uh, they, they, they'll follow you. They know where every one of those hundreds is going. And, uh, hey, black helicopters. Uh, you heard about them. Black helicopters, they're, they're everywhere. Yeah, they're, they're, on, they're on whisper mode. So you can't hear them until they've already gone. You know? I would ask that you would just like the video, comment down below, subscribe to the channel if you're new here, and of course, hit the bell icon so you can be notified anytime I upload any new content. Now, let's talk about this ritualistic queen funeral that went on. Uh, here we see they were being led by the old bath and that goat. Um, so yeah, you cannot make any of this stuff up. This funeral that they had was nothing more than chock full of Freemason, Masonic, Satanic, Illuminati symbolism. Here we see the checkerboard floor that we see in almost every single thing from music videos to movies, etc., etc. And it's also shaped like an upside down cross. And people are probably like, oh, you know, that, that's nothing, you know, some people out there. Um, but they did this on purpose. They knew what they were doing. And, and that's why they even showed the shot just like this, you know, with the upside down cross. This is all satanic Illuminati rituals. And, and people out there probably, you know, that are not fully awake thinks that, you know, this was a, a legit funeral and, you know, that she just passed away recently. Now, obviously, I know that she was of old age, but I don't even think she's honestly in this uh, coffin. I think she's probably been gone a while and they just now decided to reveal that she's gone so they can push forward more of their Freemason, Illuminati, Satanic agendas. I mean, they even had her images projected on stone hinges. So that should also tell you all that you need to know that this is nothing more than another Satanic, Illuminati, Masonic, Freemason, ritual between this most of you i'm sure everybody is wondering what's going to be happening uh especially come tomorrow i believe it was the german um uh, i don't know if it was a chancellor or the foreign minister so that everybody would know come the 24th of september where you'll be at what's 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 going to happen there's been everything you could possibly imagine nuclear war to uh full-scale economic collapse 
you know, the list could just go on as to what's going to happen or what could happen or if anything at all will happen. And I don't really know the answer to that, but I will tell you this much, though. We're watching very carefully what's happening over in Ukraine. And uh, sadly enough, even as I listen to uh, Russell Bentley speak about the situation in Ukraine, very frustrated with Putin, very frustrated with the way the war has gone. As I've often said, Putin also has his uh, taskmasters telling him exactly what to do as well. So it doesn't matter what anybody says when it comes down to it, the war is going to go exactly the way they want it to go. And we knew all along, uh, you know, supposedly by 2024, we'll be into a full-blown world war by that time. Well, that that deadline may even get moved up at the rate we're going right now. But the issue is, and this is what I shared with you the other day, is that Russia and China have been working together to make sure the United States stays busy with the situation in Ukraine while China prepares for a war against uh, Taiwan. Now, I was supposed to get an update this evening, but uh, the situation that we were working on fell through. But as we can see, let's see, I'll go back to the Syrian girl here in just a moment here. I thought I had it up here somewhere. I guess I do not have it up here still. Uh, Let's see. It's going to show you the Chinese troops there that were... News updates. And guys, we have some huge information coming out. Something going on in the Red Dragon. So you have military convoy 80 kilometer long headed to the Red Dragon capital. So it says here something is happening in the Red Dragon. A convoy 80 kilometers long of the Red Dragon Army units is headed towards the capital. Brief video below shows a small part of this troop (laughs) movement. But not only that, guys, there was something important that was uh, posted on Twitter by the real fly. Give me a second. Let me just bring him up really quick. And it says that unconfirmed reports of Coop and the Red Dragon, the leader is cuffed. And he said, I'm, I am 99% sure this is a, well, again, once again, guys, this, this is just something that's going out. I promise, Tiger, I promise. I'll tell the exchange. You tell everybody. Listen to me, Hatcher. You gotta tell them. Silent breed is people! We gotta stop them! Somehow! You are now tuned in to yet another episode of The Truth Zone. I would ask that you would just like the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new here. Hit the bell icon so you can be notified whenever I upload any new content. And of course, as always, comment down below. But human composting has been legalized in California. When we think of compost, piles of rich soil come to mind, or collecting table scraps in containers to convert to nutrient-rich dirt for the garden. In California, we'll soon have something known as human composting. It's an alternative to burial or cremation, and it's just been signed into law. It's entirely natural, so the microbes that are in our body will go to work, and they will start to break down um, our bodies at a molecular level. And so it's with those microbes and then the additional natural amendment, the wood chips and the wildflowers and the mulch, um, that they all together it will essentially create compost. The Washington State Company Earth Funeral began using this method of disposing bodies in March, where human composting is legal and environmentally safe. Another state, though, has now legalized this. I mean, we already seen where Washington State allows it. Um... And now California is, of course, allowing us, because why not? And it's crazy how Soul and Green took place in the year 2022 in the movie. Talk about predictive programming, am I right? And they're calling us a safe and friendly new green option for you to be buried. (laughs) Oh, yeah, it's really safe and friendly as your food is being grown in soil that contains human cells from people that have passed yeah that's that's really safe and friendly 
they're basically getting to the point where they're going to normalize cannibalism. I mean, let's just be blunt about it. These are some crazy, crazy, crazy times that we are in. But leave a comment down below and tell me what you think about all this. I want to hear you, what you think about all this. I know what. Just like the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. If you like the content that you are watching. And are we on the verge of a nuclear war? I don't know. You tell me. If you even believe in any of this going on in the first place with this whole nuclear war story. I have my doubts. Here's was the nuclear threat that Putin made this week, and how will President Biden respond if he makes good on it? We're taking it seriously. Uh, it's not the first time President Putin has made a nuclear threat in this conflict. He started way back in February when Russian tanks first rolled across the border, brandishing that nuclear card. And that has not deterred us from providing more than $15 billion in weapons to Ukraine, helping them uh, be able to defend their country. And it will not deter us now. And we have communicated directly, privately, to the Russians at very high levels that there will be catastrophic consequences for Russia if they use nuclear weapons in Ukraine. We have been clear with them and emphatic with them that the United States will respond decisively alongside our allies and partners. And we have protected those communications which we have done privately to the Russians, but they well understand what they would face uh, if they went down that dark road. So that means taking the fight directly to Russia. We have communicated to the Russians what the consequences would be, but we've been careful in how we talk about this publicly, because from our perspective, we want to lay down the principle that there would be catastrophic consequences, but not engage in a game of rhetorical tit for tat. So the Russians understand where we are. We understand where we are. We are planning for every contingency, and uh, we will do what is necessary to deter Russia from taking this step. And if they do, we will respond decisively. Yes, I have my doubts about all this, but you cannot ignore what is going on in the world right now. You look, you see everything from the food crisis to the economic crisis uh, to them talking about digital currencies and the whole nine yards. So you cannot ignore what's being said right now with the whole nuclear war thing. Whether it's real or not, that's to be determined. Because we know the political side of things, nine times out of ten, is a show, a distraction for what they are really planning and for what they're really, really trying to do. But with the fact that we've seen where New York released a PSA talking about a possible nuclear attack and, you know, where they're giving out bug out bags and things of that nature. And that makes you really just wonder what's going to happen. Now, I'm not going to timestamp a date like some of these people do, you know. I know there was the whole talk about the 24th and nothing happened out of that, but it's just worth keeping a note because we also know how the Vatican is moving all their assets to their bank um, on the 30th of September. All this is just worth keeping an eye on of something that could potentially be going down here in the next couple of weeks. But I just want to know your thoughts on all this. Leave a comment down below and tell me what you think about all this. These are just some dangerous and wild and crazy times that we are in. And also, if you would like to support the channel by donating to the channel via either Patreon or even PayPal, the links will be in the description. I recently traveled to Myanmar, a Southeast <laughs> Asian country moving from dictatorship to democracy. But something tragic is unfolding here as the world stands by. Hundreds of thousands of people confined to modern day concentration camps and inside a daily struggle between life and death. We have a woman who is in labor with a breech delivery. One foot has emerged. People like Menorah Begum are locked up here because of their ethnicity. They live behind fences and police checkpoints. They can't leave, and doctors aren't allowed in, even to save their lives. They have camps, but they can't leave. It's like we are like being in the in the jail. We are like in the 
the bots in the cage, died in the ghetto. As a result, they're deprived of jobs and schools. But the most urgent issue is medical care. 105? This child has a fever of 105 degrees. Without doctors, this baby's life now hinges on a wet washcloth. I've heard of the concentration camps such as Auschwitz shocked the world and continue to be a tragic historical lesson in man's inhumanity to man. However, Auschwitz was part of a much more complex and widespread system of concentration camps that, if anything, even more thoroughly demonstrated the Nazis' appalling lack of humanity based on their deep disdain for other races, religions, and classes of people. Today, we'll take a thorough look at SS concentration camps because history must be examined thoroughly to never again be repeated. We know it's a hard video, so pull up your favorite puppy photos if you need a short break. And let's dive into this somber topic. One of the first camps the Nazis built way back in 19. 1933 was Dachau. It became a blueprint for the concentration camp system in general, which grew rapidly after the SS, the Schutzstaffel, under Heinrich Himmler, consolidated control over the whole system in 1934. The Reich approved funding for the camps from their official budget in 1935, which secured the future and development of the camps until the end of World War II in 1945. Known as concentration camps, these buildings were not at first explicitly constructed to kill prisoners, but rather to incarcerate them all in a designated area. However, the brutal, degrading realities of these camps meant a shocking amount of prisoners, millions, died while being held there. In fact, many prisoners died even before arriving. Most were transported on trains over a period of days or weeks and packed so tightly that there was rarely room to even sit down. Food and water were scarce, bathrooms non-existent, and the trains arrived at concentration camps with plenty of dead bodies alongside those who had survived. What was the process of entering a concentration camp like, and what was daily life like? Prisoners Prisoners would be separated into men, then women and children, and given a prison number. Most people are familiar with the infamous numbered tattoos given to Auschwitz inmates, but in most camps this number was sewn into prisoners' clothes, a striped uniform they were forced to wear after all their belongings had been taken. Before being assigned to their barracks and work details, prisoners were undressed in full view of everyone to humiliate them. Their heads were shaved and they were forced to shower in front of all the other prisoners and the SS guards, who would hurl verbal and physical abuse at them. The whole process was designed to strip the prisoners of any sense of identity or human dignity, to depersonalize them completely and break their spirit, as the Nazis already viewed them as less than human. Though daily routines obviously varied from camp to camp, the general schedule seems to have been as follows. Prisoners would be forced to wake up between 4 a.m. and 4.30 a.m. and had approximately 30 minutes to use the bathroom, get dressed, eat, clean their space, and make their beds. Guards would punish anyone who was too slow to finish this grueling morning routine, considering the Bathrooms at concentration camps would usually be shared by up to 2,000 prisoners. It was pretty much a no-win situation for those incarcerated, and an excuse for guards to abuse their fellow human beings. After the morning tasks were completed, the guards would shuttle the prisoners outside to perform a roll call, often in incredibly harsh weather conditions. We're talking about the northern parts of Central Europe, after all. A roll call would also be performed in the evening. Almost always, some prisoners would miss roll call because they died in their sleep, or from overwork, dehydration, starvation, or a general failure of sanitation throughout the day. The bodies of these prisoners were simply brought out to count them alongside their still-breathing fellow inmates. The prisoners faced beatings and various tortures by the guards any time they collapsed, failed to respond, or honestly, any time the guards felt like it. After the morning call, prisoners set off on foot to work details. Even on this march, the SS officer would find ways to additionally degrade the prisoners, often forcing them to sing songs, insulting themselves or fellow inmates. And once again, anyone who failed to keep up with the march to work was brutally beaten and tortured. If you're beginning to get the idea that SS officers were often monsters who just like having excuses to beat and torture people, you're correct. Perhaps now would be a good time to close your eyes and picture a koala bear or a kitten and lower your blood pressure. The day ended at around 5 or 6 p.m., and after evening roll call, which would sometimes purposefully be dragged out to exhaust them, the prisoners were sent to their barracks so they could enjoy their free time, an incredibly generous way to describe passing out from exhaustion or bartering for additional food to avoid starvation. Finally, at 9 p.m., it was lights out to prepare for another grueling, miserable day. These conditions led to 1 million people dying in concentration camps alone while the Nazis were in power. So, who was being put into these concentration camps? 
Operationally, in 1933, the camps held political prisoners, mostly communists who the Nazis deemed enemies of their ideology. From 1934 onwards, the camps also started to hold a socials. This was not a term for people who preferred to read a good book rather than go out on weekends, but instead a polite term for anyone the Nazi party deemed undesirable in society. You might not be surprised to learn that this covered a pretty large group of people. A socials included members of the LGBTQ plus community, prostitutes, homeless people, Roma, and the work shy. This last term didn't necessarily mean unemployed people, but anyone the Nazis deemed as not conforming to social norms. Five Jehovah's Witnesses and pacifists were also given one-way tickets to concentration camps for refusing to fight in the Nazi army. In 1937, apparently running out of people to arrest for the crime of being themselves, the Nazis decided to add criminals to their list. Not those currently committing felonies. Oh no, Himmler and his goons loved arresting anyone who had criminal convictions in the past to round them up and send them off to the concentration camps. Just one of the many, many raids he conducted resulted in 2,000 people arrested in a single day. In 1938, Jewish people rounded up in mass after years of intense suppression and persecution under the Nazi regime. In fact, intense is definitely an understatement. Between 1933 and 38, at least 400 anti-Semitic laws were passed in Germany, whose politicians couldn't seem to get enough of them. One of the